afternoon, everybody, and you're very welcome to the Institute. Um, just a few housekeeping things. Um, if you could switch your phones to silent, please. Uh, but we do encourage you to tweet at handle at IIEA, for those of you who tweet, or Twitter, or whatever. Um, also, um, the initial speech by Mr Ball will be on the record, but the questions are under Chatham House rules, which means you can uh, use the information, but you don't assign it to anybody in particular. So, good afternoon again, and thank you for being here. Th this afternoon, we're very lucky to have um, the Executive Director of Europol, Catherine de Ball, and she is going to talk to us about the future of Europol. Most of us have an idea of what Europol does, but we're going to get a better idea today. And um, she's going to kind of talk about the links between operational and political priorities. Um, when, when Mr Ball became Executive Director in May 2018, she prioritised learning about the needs and expectations of EU members because some members might have had bigger expectations of Europol and others might have been just thinking, well, they're just there and if we need them, we'll call them. But every country now has liaison officers there. So, so she has been doing, Mr Ball has been doing a tour of all the EU capitals, meeting the liaison officers, meeting the people working in crime fighting. And so uh, in her papers and in her work onwards, she will be using that experience that she's been getting from all these visits. And her visit here to Ireland is one of such visits. She's already had meetings with the Garda Shikana, the various sections of Garda Shikana this morning. And today now we are getting the um, kind of the real thing, the real story. And um, so Mr. Ball will give her talk and then there'll be time for questions. So if you'd like to take the, the stage there, I'm going to give you a little nice back. And I forgot to sorry, I forgot to address Ambassador from Belgium is here as well. My my apologies, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you and good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Donahue for the inviting for the yes. invitation today, um, and I would like to thank the Institute for International and European Affairs because you always have been a very good partner for Europol. My predecessor has attended uh, different meetings over here. And um, your input is always uh, very much appreciated by Europol. I will start by saying something about my experience of my first 10 months in Europol and the priorities and the new strategy of Europol uh, for the future. And then I will reflect on how will we link these operational priorities to the policy discussions in uh, Brussels on the European agenda of security. In my former life, I was um, Commissioner General of the Belgian Federal Police, and my perception was at that moment that Europol was a well-functioning organization. Um, I had the impression that a lot of my colleagues, even myself, we didn't know so much about Europol, mm -hmm. but when we, there was an urgent need, we could call them and they helped us. And there was a trusted relationship with the agency. So I decided when I became um, director to visit all the member states, to listen to the feedback, what is your evaluation of the, of the agency, and what are the expectations from, uh, from your point of view for Europol for the future. Based on, these, on this input, um, we developed internally a new strategy for the uh, agency, and we proposed this new strategy uh, to the police chiefs, to the law enforcement agencies, and we discussed it with the management board, and it has been endorsed in December in the management board. And overall, um, my perception seemed to be right, because there was an overall good evaluation uh, from Europol. It's an uh, organization that is appreciated. Uh, also, the member states, they invest a lot uh, in Europol by sending very good investigators, good people, uh, to Europol for a uh, limited time frame because we have contracts of nine years. And um, this helps <coughs> us uh, to maintain the dynamics in the organization and to have enough credibility and enough creativity and to keep the link, the direct link we need with the investigators in the field in the member states so that we know that what we do adds value to the work of the investigators in the, on the field. Uh, the new strategy is called the 2020 plus strategy because we have uh, priorities on the short term, middle long term and long term. 
So it's, um, it will take some years to implement uh, the strategy. We have defined five strategic priorities for Europol. The first one is to be the EU criminal information hub. Why is this so important? Because we want to avoid duplication on European level, because we are not the only agency involved in law enforcement. There, are, there is also Frontex. Um, there are other agencies, so we have to be clear about who is going to do what. And the second important thing for us is information sharing and handling the mass data we are confronted with. What will we do? How will we be sure that the data we get uh, will be used as qualitative data for an investigator? The second uh, strategic priority is deliver agile operational support. We had the cases in Slovakia and Malta with the journalists uh, that are murdered. The support from Europol was demanded, was asked by the countries themselves. It was completely new for us because we were used to a headquarter-based agency and now we had to go on the field and help investigators on the field. So, and more and more of these questions are coming in. So this means that we have to adapt uh, our way of working. The third one is being a platform for European policing solutions in the European <coughs> Union. The law enforcement community, the police community, is confronted with a lot of the same issues. How do we deal with new technologies? How do we develop uh, new technologies? How do we use them in our processes? So there was a big demand from the chiefs to be a platform that they can share the policing solutions, that one country is knowing what is going on in another country, and it can be a solution for the developments in my country. Be at the forefront of innovation and research for law enforcement. We all have limited resources, so it's important that we uh, pool these resources, that we put it together, and that we don't have too much duplication on police level in the whole of the Union. And then for our internal cuisine, we want to be the uh, model uh, law enforcement agency of Europe uh, when we talk about accountability, transparency, good governance, diversity, and staff engagement. I will not focus in depth on all the five. I will only focus on uh, the areas that are, are most important at the policy level. The first one is information management. This is of key importance for us uh, and for the, whole of the for the whole of the law enforcement uh, agencies in the whole of the Union. We have the EU interoperability agenda, very important for the European Union because we have a <coughs> connection in between different databases. For law enforcement, it's very important to have access to the databases. And how will the access be organized? What is the legal framework we will have to work in? Um, how will we put it into place? Uh, the improved the improved access will be there and we will have the possibility to use uh, more data. We talk about the Schengen Information System, the SIS. We talk about the new system for applications for et electronic uh, visas, ETIAS. The Visa Information System, VIS. And the Entry Exit uh, System. Technically, and uh, it is a very complicated exercise uh, we are making, but uh, what the focus for us should always be, it's the operational, operational added value of the interoperability. We can never uh, forget about that, what are the benefits. Um, for law enforcement, this interoperability and the information management is of key, important, key importance for the future because it will give us the ability to assess threats more accurately and to monitor movements of uh, terrorists and of serious and organized crime uh, criminals. This has to be linked to modernization of the IT systems. In a lot of countries, they are uh, having plans and developing plans to modernize the uh, IT systems. Also in Europol, with the new regulation, we have to adapt and we have to change our IT architecture. Um, and we have chosen for an integrated data management system. All the relevant data we are entrusted with, with we have uh, to process this data and we have to do it in an innovative way. We have to be compliant with the data protection rules and we have to be compliant with all the security rules. I can assure you that it is not an easy exercise and we have four different uh, supervisory authorities regarding that. 
The second one is that we want to increase our response to the threats and we want to increase our operational performance and we have defined five actions for this. We want to strengthen the fight in financial investigations and economical crimes. Because why? Because we see that it's a persistent threat. Between 2010 and 2014, we did see that um, the estimated proceeds of crime were seized and frozen, or frozen were only 2.2%, and only 1.1% was confiscated in the EU member states. And we see now that there is almost no evolution in this. So the figures are very bad. Uh, during the tour in Europe, uh, all the uh, police chiefs stressed it, that we have to invest more in economical and financial crimes and that we have to tackle and we have to uh, take um, the organized uh, crime groups and the, the high value target targets there where it hurts the most, and this is uh, in the financial uh, sphere. Um, we have had a lot of um, initiatives on the European level to make life easier for law enforcement with the any money laundering directives, but we see that um, the infrastructure we have to work in is not flexible enough and that it still prevents us to share uh, and exchange information among different partners. And we need to find better solu solutions. So uh, for the first time, we uh, launched at Europol a um, transnational public-private partnership created uh, in the field of any money uh, laundering and counter-terrorist financing. And we are in fact assessing what is existing in the different countries um, and where are the gaps. And then we will try to uh, find uh, solutions and we will try to uh, find um, uh, possible ways uh, to go forward. I have seen the first results of uh, this uh, private uh, public partnership and it is quite promising. So I think uh, we are on the right track because we need to build bridges uh, between private and public sector. The second uh, area uh, will be drugs trafficking. We still see that 70% of the information we get is drug-related information uh, at Europol level. Uh, the fight against terrorism, the fight against cybercrime, and the fight against uh, migrant smuggling and all the related crimes remain very, very important, but we see that we have to reinforce our fight against drugs trafficking. Uh, we see that the illegal mark, uh, drugs market is worth an estimated of 24 billion euros a year. It's uh, a very high figure. We see a significant increase of cocaine coming from Colombia in all the European countries. We see a large increase of poppy cultivation in Afghanistan, which reached record levels in 2018, and, uh, is ex and there is, the result is higher um, in quantities of heroin reaching uh, Europe than ever before. We see that fentanyl is uh, raising, and uh, we see that there is an incredible misuse of postal services and drug uh, shipments. We also saw that last year, 2018, almost 8,000 people in the European Union lost, lost their lives related to drugs. So there is a time and uh, there is a need uh, for more action. Uh, we did focus on the three traditional crimes, terrorism, cybercrime, and, and migrant smuggling. We did not focus enough on drugs and we have to um, re-engage in this area. The third priority for our operational responsiveness is crime analysis. Um, and I saw in the future plan uh, for the ir policing in Ireland, it's also mentioned that crime analysis uh, are very, very important for investigators and that we have to strengthen our methodologies, uh, our interoperability of the analysis in between the different countries and um, that we have to have a higher quality of uh, the analysis. Um, what also surprised me a bit is when I uh, visited the different countries that a lot of people in the law enforcement community ask for a harmonization of methods and tools on the European level um, for uh, crime analysis. 
to facilitate uh, cross-border cooperation and increase the potential for analysis conducted in one country to use it before court in another country. Uh, we have to deal with big data, we have to deal with Internet of Things, there is the cloud, these are no emerging threats anymore, it is there and we have to deal with it, but we have to step at, up our efforts on a police level, on a law enforcement level, because uh, we have to do more in this uh, area. Then uh, we have, uh, as you maybe know, uh, the impact framework. The impact framework is about the priorities on the European level in um, serious and organized crime. It is a massive driver to um, stimulate the different member states in tackling serious and organized crime. A lot of uh, money is involved uh, with the impact framework. We want to use the impact framework even better in the future and also focus on new um, areas. For instance, we have the High Value Target uh, project. It is a project where we want to um, go after the soi-disant CEOs of the criminal organizations uh, through a prioritization system. And then as a fifth uh, priority, we have forensics. It's um, a lot of expertise. It's a lot of uh, resources that are demanded. It's a lot of knowledge about new technologies. So also there, there is a global understanding uh, in the law enforcement community that we have to, pool res to put resources together uh, to be at the top level of uh, forensic investigation. It is better that we sometimes invest one time than 27 times um, uh, in, in, in these uh, investigative techniques. Uh, the demand is there and Europol is ready uh, to develop together with the member states an approach in forensics. One of our major uh, projects now uh, that uh, is in, an, in a very um, uh, good phase is the decryption platform uh, together with uh, the research and development center for the European Union. We are building a decryption platform for all the member states uh, to, you, to uh, decrypt in fact uh, encrypted data. It's one of the EU policing solutions. Um, for us at Europol, we are an agency. We have to collaborate together with other agencies. Um, the Justice and Home Affairs agencies um, are working already together. We want to do it better. Europol is now sharing uh, the board of the Justice and Home Affairs uh, agencies. Our aim is to um, focus on the gaps and on duplication. Uh, what we would like is to have one uh, voice, to speak with one voice, and to offer one solution to member states that have difficulties uh, to understand who is doing what on European level. So together with Frontex, for instance, we developed five principles um, to define the cooperation in between us and to avoid duplication of resources and to avoid uh, duplication of investments. When we go to a member state, we would like to, to go as the European agency that can do this, this, this uh, for you in the different areas so that it's easier. It was a clear demand uh, from different ministers of interior and of justice when I visited uh, the different member states. The key uh, partners for Europol are uh, Frontex, EU LISA for the interoperability agenda, high tech uh, developments, um, the European Mon Monitoring Center for Drugs and Drugs Addiction, EMD, EMCDDA, CPOL for the trainings uh, of law enforcement, uh, and uh, Eurojust. Uh, they are very important to us. Now about the links between operational and policy level. I don't have to tell you that 2019 is a very important year uh, for us and, and for you for the politics in the European Union. After the elections in May, we will have to deal with a new parliament. And uh, in October, in autumn, we will have a new team of commissioners um, uh, in the European Union. Um, we would like uh, to propose them and to, um, to ask them to focus again on um, organized crime and drugs. Uh, as we see the, the years uh, before us, um, the role um, of the Commission was very important in the counterterrorism. They uh, allowed us to create the European counter 
uh, and Terrorism Center in Europol. Uh, we created, um, together with the European institutions, the European Migrant Smuggling Center. We were able to create the European uh, Cybercrime Center. Um, it has grown, it has been effective, it has proven that it was needed for the security in the Union, um, and we, we see that in the future we will still have to invest in it, and it will keep and it will uh, remain a priority uh, for Europol. For instance, when we see um, uh, the figures of uh, migrants, um, we, we see that there is better border protection now, but a lot of the migrants trying to reach the European uh, Union in 90 and from 90 to 90, 95% of them, they are using uh, criminal networks to get in because the controls are stricter. So it's, it's more difficult for them to get here. So they have to do, uh, they have to use more um, uh, illegal uh, networks. Counterterrorism, there is more information exchange. Um, we have a lot of expertise and experts in uh, the European, uh, in, in Europol. We have the secure network, CT Siena. Um, we have um, Europol now involved from the prevention and detection, detection phase uh, for possible attacks in different uh, countries. So we will have to continue investing in it. And we are convinced that we have to reinforce in uh, organized crime and economical crime. Um, why? Because we see there is a huge demand. It is a huge um, uh, phenomenon we are confronted with. It destabilizes the economy in the European Union. And we see also that the member states are ready to share sensitive data with Europol because it is a trusted environment. <coughs> and the data that is shared with Europol remains the data of a member state. But together, we can do a lot more than alone as a country. And um, we can create operational task forces, develop an action plan to tackle the serious and organized crime group and groups and to prioritize uh, whom we are going to tackle together with different countries. It is um, a way to have a real impact on uh, organized crime groups and uh, their infiltration in our economy. Um, we are also exploring with our stakeholders the best way to ensure a proper support for major uh, investigations at short notice. And this is the agile operational support uh, we refer to in our strategy. This brings me to the question of the funding. Uh, Europol um, is, uh, has to be funded, we have to pay. Uh, when we have operational meetings, Europol pays uh, the travels, for instance, uh, for the people coming to the meetings. Um, we have the discussions now going on in the multi-annual uh, financial framework. It's a seven-year uh, um, seven period, and it will run from 2021 to 2027. And I must say that um, the proposals that are on the table now do not guarantee that we will be able to deliver in all the areas because we we are confronted with a reduction, in fact, of the budget as it is proposed now. So um, we hope that uh, the, new, the ministers, the commissioners, and the members of parliament will understand uh, the need for an investment in Europol because it's a direct investment in the member state. If we talk about innovation, operational support, uh, helping in the investigations. Um, there are many other issues I could mention about Europol but I am conscious about the time and I would also like to answer some of your questions. Um, we will celebrate with Europol the 20th anniversary this year. So it's still a young organization when you compare to national law enforcement uh, agencies in the countries. But the growth uh, Europol take, uh, took, I think we are on the good track. Um, we are respected, we are trusted, and we can re deliver real support uh, to member states, and we work really in a trusted uh, environment. Um, I think also the global issues we are confronted with and the European answers we have to give for the, glo the global issues are very important, and we do try to do this together with the member states. So I am a strong believer in European cooperation, and uh, I would like to thank uh, the Irish police uh, for the 
for the two days and the insights you gave me in your organization and the uh, proposals you made for the, the direction Europol should take. Uh, so I look very positive towards the future and I am ready uh, to give an answer to your questions if it is possible. And I thank you very much for your attention.